Welcome back to Warthon and welcome to the Dark Talks number 47. Today we have a huge variety of topics and they are all around like um, what's happened lately and some of the discussions. And I just want to mention the topics. Um, I want to talk about the APDS scandal in conjunction with the hash nerf, the impact of the French inside uh, within War Thunder, good and not so good things. Then Germany is let down if you look at the entire tech tree, player base, elitism and how it also comes from this German letdown. APHE rework, which many th uh, many people say that APHE overperforms, but in fact it underperforms. And uh, you will see where I'm coming from if we talk about this. Then also a thousand days of logging in and a thousand vehicles within the game. Then also questions from last Duck Talks. Over 6.8 thousand subscribers, the sound mod, and at the end also a forum um, where I participate in that's independent from Gaijin and uh, is a German community forum. But I am actually somewhat responsible for content within the English section of this German forum. So um, there will be links in the video description and we will begin with the APDS scandal. So what am I talking about here? In a nutshell, somebody has come across a well blog from Rita Gamer and she was working together with some data miners as far as I can recall it. And they just found out that the APDS on the L7 gun in particular is massively underperforming and beyond 60 degrees of uh, sloped armor, the shell just does some very weird things. And I will just talk in a moment why that is so significant. So um, then somebody posted that on the forums and since then the forums are on fire. And yeah, the developers and the moderators, they kind of try to fix that stuff. I personally will talk about why it's so significant and why I think it's true. But also I will give Gaijin the benefit of the doubt, once again, to call it a bug and hotfix it. I think that is one of the most political correct statements that you can make at this point in time. <coughs> yeah, um, the APDS on the L7 gun is responsible for a lot of frustration is a lot of yeah responsibility for so much russian bias um, in the game in the mind of the player base not just from me but whatever i think shall not be relevant here but the hard facts are important and those are if you look at the normalization and uh, the penetration values the l7 gun at the 60 degrees of angle where it's mostly important because you have to mostly deal with soviet tanks and it's your stock shell so you have to use it for a while except if you want to spend huge amounts of gold needles to get to the tier 4 heat upgrade and you know the hash shell before that was nerfed to exactly not perform against soviet sloped armor on the medium tanks uh, anymore same goes for um yeah the apds basically that it's just not good enough to penetrate the soviet armor of the t5447 from the hull um despite it just being possible on the stat card uh, at combat range furthermore um, same goes for the Jagdtiger and the uh, M103s or the French 120mm solid shot. They just can't do it. You know, it doesn't matter if you have APHE, AP or APDS, it doesn't go through. Against the other variants of the T54 uh, model kind of variation family, if you, if you want to call it so. Uh, the 49 variant, the 51 variant, T55, T60A and so forth, you actually can penetrate them. But the post penetration effect is just horribly bad. You will very often not kill the crew despite aiming for the right hand side. For the left hand side the fuel tank will eat the shells, uh, eat all the shrapnels, the ammunition doesn't blow up and you get killed in return shot. Then furthermore, uh, if they angle, you very often just simply outright bounce or do no penetration at all. 
and that is significant because well the APDS is a stock round so you have to use it for quite some while then also Penetrating the turret front is, in my opinion, unreliable, especially with an unupgraded gun. And even then, it's not guaranteed. And also, it's not guaranteed that you do enough damage. And to reload before the enemy tank can recall his driver and one-shot you. Furthermore, this is important because it's not just Germany with the Leopard that is relying on this gun. Hell no, it's the Americans with the M60s, horrible stock run by the way, then it's of course the Germans with the Leopard, but furthermore we have of course the British with the Centurion Mark 10 and the Vickers MBT, and also the Japanese. So four out of the six real tank nations within War Thunder rely on the L7 gun, not with, uh, but it's not with the French that got recently introduced, and also, of course, the Soviets. So, again, uh, APDS, horribly bad, unreliable, and just absurdly weak. Hash got nerfed so that you cannot really deal with Soviets from the front anymore. Very reliable. Again, at that 60 degrees of angling. And yeah, the heat also not the greatest post penetration effect. And it's a tier 4 upgrade. And this is a stock run through four nations. And I always hated on that. I literally hated on that and I didn't like it. And I was called out for it. Just learn to play, just get good and whatnot. No. Again, it's proven that it's nonsense, like with the IS-6 turret front or with the T-29 lower plate, you know. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's bugged, we will remove it. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So now let's talk about the French tanks. And I have to say, all the tanks that I played, I kind of liked. And the best part of it was that the tanks by themselves were not overpowered. They still were killable by everything that you faced them. One exception might be the Foch. Um, but we will see how it plays out. Currently it's very very strong and uh, it's still kind of possible to deal with it but it's not that easy, let's put it that way. It's again uh, Jagdtiger on steroids. It should deserve a higher battle rating in my opinion, 7.7 .7 at least. Um, but other than that the autoloaders are not overpowered and I think what really was something that I liked about the French was the AEP buff that they brought with them and also the spotting mechanic that also brought more um, more important to other nations like tanks as well that also got this kind of feature I think it should be also implemented for SPAA you know if you are somewhere in the bushes and you see an enemy tank moving by that you can't penetrate from the front or the side at least give the position away to your team and uh, then take him down with teamwork you distract him and then he gets shot in the side by a teammate and so forth that's an idea I really love the scout mechanic but it brings also a problem to the Germans to which I will come later on and also the British must not forget about about this and uh, yeah the AP buff why is the AP buff so good and so important first of all it is very important for a new nation when it gets implemented that it uh, can actually work with the tool that it's got and for the uh, French it is the armor piercing shell and the buff the buff was really necessary so that you actually can kill the tanks now what currently is happening that it worked before muscle velocity is the same like before on all other nations tanks and uh, also the penetration values are okay and the autoloaders are not overpowered they still have their drawbacks and they don't fire APHE and the spawning effect is big so you still can one shot a lot of tanks even from the side you do a lot of damage and you can outright more or less reliably one shot enemy tanks from the rear by shooting through their hull which is something that i really like because you set the engine on fire and then still the shell goes on and spawns also in the crew compartment which is really nice indeed so um, that also brings new life to some light tank gameplay Talking about other nations' gameplay, it brought a massive buff to the American patterns, especially with the stock run and a lot of the Shermans as well. Then also the British have not just an alternative shell now to the 20 pounder uh, aside from the APDS that deals damage, it's in fact, you know, want I have the high penetration, low damage output, or do I want the low uh, damage, high 
I want I have the low penetration, high damage output. And you know, for the British with the 20 pounder, that is uh, benefited by high rate of fire and also stabilizers, you know, Centurion Mark III, Carnarvon, etc. It's really strong, so it actually supports this theoretical buff. Also, Soviet low tiers, you know, KV 1s and T 34s in the beginning, that actually need that penetration. And yeah, it eased up a lot of the stock run, which is a big thumb up from me for Gaijin. And yeah, I might give some of the tanks another go and might look at it, how it really affects the gameplay. Scouting mechanic included, Walker Bulldog as well with the solid shots versus APDS and scouting mechanic. It actually got indirectly and directly buffed. Then let's talk about APHE and why it needs actually a rework. So I just talked about AP, uh, AP shots and how they got a buff with the spalling, which they actually needed to make them somewhat useful and enjoyable, but they are not overpowered. The king of damage dealing at this point in time is still APHE. Once it enters the tank, it is most likely a one shot. Even small shells with a low burst charge can deal massive damage, even to very big tanks such as the Mars or uh, Yacht Tiger and, and uh, Hori production prototype, whatever, uh, where the crew compartment is big, they deal massive damage. Now, how does an APHE shot work against an AP shot? Well, the AP is just a solid shot there is no high explosive charge in them. For the APHE shell, it's like a solid shot, but at the rear end, so there uh, is a cave, and in this cave, that is mostly tubular, there is a high explosive charge. And this high explosive charge gets triggered once it passes through a certain thickness of armor, and uh, then um, there is a fuse delay, and after the delay is complete, the shell goes off. And what happens now is very important to understand why APHE needs a buff and overall a rework. So in the game, it just explodes like a hand grenade. And that is not correct because um, the high explosive charge is mostly... Um, along it's not just a big ball of high explosive that explodes no it's also the fragmentation it creates and this is now where it's getting really uh, interesting first of all the head of the warhead still should uh, go on after the explosion and you know hit the engine set it on fire or go through the engine compartment if you shoot it from the rear and it also also should have the spawning effect that the AP shot has because the warhead itself is the same so it shouldn't make a difference but uh, you know with some of the German tanks you really get punished if you penetrate armor that's too thin you know 28 millimeters of fuse sensitivity is nonsense in my opinion um, you over penetrate so many tanks from the side it's not even funny and then you have no spawning effect and then the explosion itself. It shouldn't go into all directions, but to the side in a very narrow circle, at least the fragments. And they still should deal a lot of damage to the crew and they should also bounce from the sides of the tanks. Now, I know it's very easy to implement a very simple point radial explosion with APHE rather than this very, um, very rather complicated um, spalling and fragmentation pattern that we see in some of the um, in some of the documents but then there is the other thing that would shift the balance because are then cupola shots still possible in the way that they are they already got removed from the t95 you know the super heavy tank destroyer from the americans which uh, is leads to more use of this vehicle and so you have to think about this because if a nation relies on it you suddenly have create a new problem furthermore um, tanks like the t-54 highly mobile the cupola is one of the weak spots and then we have to talk about the explosion itself now up until a hundred grams of high explosive let's just call it a hundred grams you could survive the explosion itself now where i'm coming from is that uh, there was a test uh, a dev server like two patches ago and it had a bug and it was a very interesting bug in the fact that um it didn't show the shrapnels 
it didn't show the shrapnels and so I could test the high explosive damage itself and I'm not and I was not using the Jagdtiger's APHE for that no I was using the Soviet Object 268 with its APHE shell which has a massive massive burst charge let me just quickly look it up but it must be several kilos it's basically a kv1 aphe shot and there we go so the br540b has 1.12 kilograms of tnt equivalent that is a lot that is a, a lot that's four and a half pounds of high explosive containment and if that goes off inside a tank the explosion alone the pressure the heat um the shock wave you know all that should kill the crew by itself even without the shrapnels and it should set off ammunition that's i don't know half a meter away but on the death server i noticed what something with one of the strongest aphe shells in the game i had to go very very close to crew to kill it like just a uh, 10 centimeters like not even the diameter of the shell and the same goes for amorex that is very weak yes very small burst charges like on the chairman 75 millimeter shell they should mostly create uh, rely on their shrapnels and maybe a little bit on the explosion but not all that great because you kind of could survive like up to 50 grams um, of high explosive containment but not 1.1 kilograms which was hilarious and i tried it against uh, german tanks yes i know it was a bug on the dev server but this was the only way how I could figure out how the explos explosion itself works. And that is way too weak. Way too weak. Um, explosion, high explosive in War Thunder is still very much too weak. If you look at the mine shells for the Germans, if you look at 20 millimeter. 20 millimeter rounds for other nations it's mostly the armor piercing effect uh, with hispanos you also do mostly um, just pilot snipes so it's like firing armor piercing rounds which makes no goddamn sense for me but you know this is how it is so APHE needs a rework but in fact it would lead to a massive buff to APHE but most of the time you one shot your targets anyway it's just details in fact but uh, for over penetration it would be definitely um, a buff so and that then brings us to the German letdown of the entire tech tree and also player base and elitism now once uh, there was the p51h I realized something with German teams um, a lot of the players were not really performing like with the teamwork that i was used to from one patch to the other and obviously they were researching the p51h a lot of players have um the planes that they want they do not play tanks and they just are interested in the planes and then i saw a shift of the player base the very good players in a nutshell were suddenly on the american team and you really really felt that and it became so much more apparent that German planes are actually that bad once you uh, remove the part of you know massive amounts of bombers on the allied teams and uh, fighters doing ground strafing and so forth and they're actually climbing and doing teamwork you you saw the results reverse suddenly Germany lost game after game after game after game and um that is also for the tanks the case now there are the french tanks and they get obviously driven by the very dedicated players towards war thunder they want to test out the new tanks they want to uh, test out the new scouting mechanic and they just can outplay uh, players that are also in tanks that are very slow and i'm sorry but you can not flank in a tiger 2 you can try but you look like a complete fool because then everybody shoots you in the side and the tiger 2 is a huge target you know must not forget about this and um, on, on big maps it becomes all the more apparent so while the french brought a lot of good stuff with them with their you know scouting and mobility and so forth it's way too easy to deal with uh, tiger 2s that are out of position and they're always out of position
Um, it, it must not always necessarily be a bad player. I mean, I don't see too many, you know, 20 game kills or 20 kill games with uh, German teams. And, you know, even the straight up opposition became stronger, stronger and stronger. And the tanks that you could have killed easily before that, you no longer really face that often, do you? I'm here talking about IS-2 mod 1944 or Super Pershing. No, you have much stronger opposition that can withstand your gunfire very, very easily, especially at long range. I'm not talking here just about the IS-6, of course. Also T-29 slash T-34. And, uh, you know, meanwhile you get flanked by all the... Uh, French tanks and they just spot you and then just shoot you in the side and with the AP buff they do a lot of damage and I have done it myself and what I'm talking here about is Germany has nothing at rank 3, 4 and partially 5 that is really mobile then we also have to talk about the Leopard you kind of see a pattern here emerging Germany has been power creeped and Gaijin refuses to give the Germans something with mobility and good penetration that is not premium. I'm talking here about the RE251 and the MKPZ M47. And so it's not that easy to make the entire tech tree work. And it's always so hilarious if I read some of the comments from people that are just straight out lying to me. And they think they can bullshit me with, with comments like, Oh, you just have to retreat, don't make a head-on engagement, you just have to position yourself, because they are taking it way out of context and not listening to what I have to say in my videos, which is really something annoying, you know. I mean, I love discussion, I love different opinions if they can back them up, but if they are straight up trying to bullshit me, if they try to lie to me, sorry, but I have no time for that. I, don't, I literally have no time for that. Um... And this is coming from an elitism that is still going on. And, you know, I kind of, we have to live with elitism, but with stupidity that's coming from, from people that think they are the very best players in War Thunder, it's funny. The funny thing about uh, bad players is, um, let me tell you, let, let me try to explain it to you like that. If a player is bad, but he still can perform in certain tanks versus other tanks very well, what do you then call that tank? You have a hard time telling me that the tank is then still balanced. And again, we have to talk here about the I-6 and the T-29 when they came out. And you know, after that the bugs got removed, but they're still very strong, capable tanks. Why? Because I tried them myself. And... Uh, Whatever I see on the battlefield on the other side uh, still proves my point. Then, um, yeah, a thousand days of logging in and a thousand vehicles that are mine. It's just crazy. It just happened to be that both um, things have fallen together within like 10 days. I tried to separate it. Uh, I released a video of a thousand vehicles a few days after I actually got the vehicle. So, yeah, there is that. Uh, I am still baffled by those numbers myself. I never thought I would make it that far and the, st the game would still be so much fun after all this time, despite its issues. And that's just insane. Over 6.8 thousand subscribers. Um, 6,800 subscribers, it's, it's, it's a huge number. I thought at the end of the year I would maybe have four and a half, five thousand subscribers when you remember one duck talk like a year ago. Um, so yeah, the channel is growing stronger and stronger. Let's hope that we can maybe breach 10,000 subscribers in spring if it continues in the way if we ex extrapolate. Uh, the numbers you know we have a good chance um, and yeah I want to make you aware of that in the video description below there is now a link to a German forum and you will find my content also in the English section uh, it's independent from Gaichen and you will find a lot of other people there to chat with and to um, exchange ideas and also, I have to say, it's still new. So this is your chance to have a good impact there. Um, link in the video description below. 
and then I wanted to quickly talk about the sound mod that I'm using. Um, if I don't forget it, I will post a link in the video description below as well. So it's really worth looking into this video description this time. A lot of new stuff. I like the sound mod. It gives very uh, much more depth into you know playing the game at first, but it still kind of sometimes bugs out. It has like um, an issue with displaying the engine sound after a few battles. Furthermore, aircraft, you don't hear that good either with falling bombs. You don't hear the, the, the bomb falling sound sometimes. It also bugs out. But most of the time, it's really, really great. The gun sounds, engine sounds, and so forth, they, they just give so much more depth to it. Um, yeah, then I wanted to quest to also answer the questions from last year's Duck Talks. Let's begin with that now. So first question comes from Peter Ennard um, and the question is basically why doesn't Gaijin use real or historical skins for tanks while they already exist for planes? Well, um, you can use user-made uh, skins for tanks as well for planes. You can find them on War Thunder Live and also you can edit those skins and um, I know for sure that for tanks the skins changed a lot throughout the war and also also throughout the seasons so winter spring summer and so forth um, I actually don't mind it too much personally but you know you still can use some user made content maybe you find the historical skins on warthunder.life then um, some nations have tanks planes of other nations to fill their ranks for example you can find shaman versions in all nations except the italians then why aren't the t54 55s for the shamans since the ddr had them well i don't know um we will see how this would work out but it would be something very interesting how a t54 would work out on the shaman uh, side um then Ryan McWerther asks, Napalm, what is your opinion on top tier light tanks? Big Light Panzer, BMP specifically. Re recently I got the bagel and it seems to be able to deal with quite anything, including nasty things like T64 and T10M. Um, yes, it can if you put a lot, and I mean a lot of effort into your positioning and have luck that nobody is hunting you down or just straight up intercepts you while you try to get into a flanking position. And, you know... At this point in time, just think about it. Even a Packwagen is able to kill tanks uh, at the top tier bracket, but you don't really call it competitive, do you? Then a very interesting question from Rahul Semant. Hey, another question. I'm grinding Chieftain Mark 10. Its spare parts require 33,000 RP, whereas T64 and MBT70 require only 25,000 research points. Why this difference? It's really make me piss off. Why they're making Chieftain grind in rank 6 more difficult? It already sucks a lot in rank 6. First of all, the Chieftain has its difficulties, I agree. But what I answered to this after I looked into it, well, the Chieftain has just 3 times tier 1 upgrades, whereas the T64 and BMP uh, 70 have 4 times tier 1 upgrades. Overall, all 3 tanks have 100 thousand rp to spend to unlock all rank one upgrades um so it's actually difficult to get one upgrade it's uh, uh on the chieftain compared to the mbt70 or t64a but the overall rp requirements for all tier one upgrades is the same so uh, this is something important that you always have to keep in mind Another very interesting question comes from Flexi Superschnitzel and he basically asks me in German uh, if I have any tips for his arcade air channel and he is convinced that his content is good but he doesn't really seem to go off the channel that is and if I have some tips well first of all playing arcade is nothing wrong with it but i have to say a lot of people are not that interested in watching arcade and even i switch to um, rb because i think it's easier to make content with it easier to show off certain strategies and um, play styles 
in arcade it's so much more intense and so much it, it completely requires another skill set that certain people just call it uh, you know randomness and just head on but it, it's so difficult to explain it in time and to keep it entertaining even though you have 20 kills you know in, in a game which is barely doable these days even with soviet planes um it's it's not that easy to make it go however with just covering war thunder with just covering uh, air battles you are one of many youtubers and there is not the biggest uh, audience in youtube that is interested in watching this not just arcade but Ch war thunder in general no war thunder channel by itself has like a million subscribers or something like this and even i needed over one and a half years to um, go over i don't know 5000 subscribers and you know i got a lot of help from michael spoon from shoutouts uh, from so many people like also many miles away even the orange doom from time to time and you know um, you also have to be present on war thunder live you have to be friendly you must not get triggered by some idiots in the comment section and you need to not get discouraged give it time and it might go off um, i cannot promise it to you because youtube is indeed a hard business and uh, everything about it is interesting and people are very impatient from time to time um, so at the end you have to give it time and it's not easy but at the end you will gain constantly subscribers even if you lose them don't get discouraged Ben Peltola asks what do you think needs to be done to fix RRB <sighs> Oh my, where should I begin? Map rotation, ground targets, uh, BR changes, um, decompression in the jet level, uh, flight models for certain nations and certain planes need to be worked. It's actually too much to fix it in one patch, I guess. So, difficult answer to ask. Then uh, Alpha Guardian asks if there is a justification for a 0.3 increase in battle rating for the Carnarvon and Centurion Mark III uh, because of the stabilizer and high rate of fire and so forth. I say yes, they are greatly under tiered and just because lower battle rating tanks might struggle or had struggled in the past is not a justification to make them kind of feel too strong. And also I think that the repair cost uh, increase is not a very nice um, way to trying to balance it so those two tanks in particular but also the Centurion Mark 1 in my opinion together with the FE 4202 they are way too uh, under tiered by at least 0.3 if you think about it for example Centurion Mark 3 uh, or even the Centurion Mark 10 it has a high rate of fire with a stabilizer with the mostly same ammunition at a much lower battle rating and just traits of mobility versus armor. The armor counts actually for something and the mobility on the Leopard is way too low but still it get punished a lot by the increase in battle rating. So that's my opinion in a nutshell. And that's just the Leopard you know, there are so many more examples. Formiga asks, hey Napalm Ratti, what do you think about the current battle rating of the Tortoise? Should it get back to 6.3? Well, the Tortoise is a very interesting tank and I have to still try it out. I mean, I tried it out for respading purposes before the AP buff. Now, after the AP buff, I think the 94mm gun will perform even stronger. And it has a huge amount of survivability. It's a big fortress. In certain ways, it's kind of it. It kind of feels like a modified Jagdtiger, and you know that is at uh, 7.3. So it's not that easy to answer this question. But I say um, you can let it uh, stay at 6.7 um, because then you punish even more 5.3 three tanks with it and that's just not fun at all for those tanks if suddenly the tortoise gets spammed out a lot again because you know if you buff a vehicle you always have to think about if you overdo it and this is a great danger then charret chris asks napal what do you think about the french 190 is it worth grinding for use in ground rb um 
if I remember correctly, it's an A8. So I think the best you could expect next to the 420s is a pair of rockets. Really worth it compared to what the French have else? I don't think so, but it will be a nice collector's item, I guess. And uh, I think I should try out the uh, A8 once more. It got buffed recently. I've flown it since. It's not extremely bad anymore, but I'm still not that convinced. I'm not a fan. Tech Priest asks, what's Napalm Rata's favorite food besides vast amounts of T-34s? Well, actually, that's all that I need. And salty player tears. <laughs> now, jokes aside, um, it's too much to mention here. I really love food in general. Um, I love Asian food. I love, um, you know, all sorts of food from French, Italian food to... It's, it's just too much to mention. And then, you know, there is the huge amount of variations that you get from the German cuisine. Then Rahul Samant asks what I think about the Chieftain Mark V and if it should get APFSDS. Well, I think um, the biggest problem that I have with the Chieftains in general is the lack of mobility. The gun itself and also the shell, I cannot really complain it, uh, especially with the rate of fire. Then Claudi Foshan has two questions. If I want to have no markers in RRB back, and the answer is no. I need the markers in RRB to judge if I can engage or not, if there is still somebody um, going for me or not. The markers are not ideal, but it's the best that I think is doable in RRB with clouds and division and so forth. I've done videos uh, on this subject. The next question is, if I want to see the Löwe being introduced into the game. First of all, to see it, Kind of, yes, I would be curious which plans were actually made, but I think the vehicle itself, together with the gun, were actually never used on a tank, and the Löwe itself was never built. So, I don't think it would be something nice. And unlike, for example, the Panther 2, which is a paper tank, the Löwe would be slow and lumbering, the armor wouldn't be that much better than, for example, of a Target 2. So I don't think it would bring something new to Germany. What we need within Germany are more light tanks for scouting, for uh, flanking the enemy, winning the scout battle, uh, and letting the Target 2s, what they actually can do somewhat best, frontline head-on engagements. And now we have a very interesting question from ButcherBird44. For maybe a question, have you seen Messerschmitt's brilliant flying in the 190s or what do you think of Sorin Thunder's brilliant 109 flying? I know it has been a while for Messer, but I wonder what you think of that. First of all, I agree, it's nice flying. However, what you guys might not think of is that um, I tried to fly the same way even before I have seen his videos and his content, and I like that. But whenever I face somebody in a Spitfire, he's just cutting the throttle and I cannot make him overshoot. And what do you then? I've seen trying uh, Focke Wolves do that stuff with me when I was in a Spitfire, and I was like, hmm, just quickly pull a little bit up and re-engage them, shoot them down when they're on the deck, and you know, it just cost me a little bit of time. Yeah, let them roll around, I just don't mind. And one really important quote from Messerschmitt was when I saw him on a live stream was he's not confident in those German planes. He's not confident, he doesn't trust the planes as much as he trusts like a Bearcat or a, or a um, Spitfire. And another addition to that comes from me. If he is so damn good in 190s and 109s, what do you think he can do in Spitfires. What do you think he makes out of the enemy team if you give him a Japanese plane? Simple as that. I also get kills in my Focke Wolves and in my 109s, but mostly it's head-on engagements, mostly it's an idiot that tries to do ground strifing, mostly it's the horde of bombers that I farm, and mostly it's just teamwork when um, somebody baits for the other. But in a simple one versus one, 
And this is what Messerschmitt said himself. The planes have no benefit. And I talked to a lot of guys, a lot of very experienced players. And uh, I asked them, hey, what do you think about this and that? What benefits do they have? And everybody ultimately said the same. They have no advantage. It's down to teamwork. It's satisfying if you shoot down the enemy because he made a mistake. And this is what I am actually um, showing in my videos. This is what I'm commenting on. And it still gets ignored by people that just uh, yeah, want to be different, especially in the comment section. I can turn fire Spitfires. I can boom and zoom them all day long. I'm always in a preferable situation. You just have to be good. You just have to learn how to play. This is kind of the, the way that certain people argue. And this is what I just call bullshit and ignore them. Because I play every plane, aside from some jets, I play every plane myself throughout all the nations. I have them. I spaded them myself in arcade, in realistic battles. I tried out a little bit of simulator and that is another topic. But, you know, in realistic battle where it matters, 109s and BF 109s are way too restricted. And I've talked enough about it. Um, they are just underperforming way too greatly. Um, so I hope this question is answered. Padard Ash Dana asks, Hi Napalm, do you have any idea how I get the Type 62 light tank? So um, it was available in an event. And if you want to get it outside of that, maybe create a YouTube channel, get 1,500 subscribers and ask Gaijin if they let you participate in the Gaijin partnership program and uh, request that vehicle. Maybe you have luck. I cannot promise you that. I played for the T62 light tank, for the Type 62 light tank myself. And maybe it's available once more in another event. And that's the only way with the Gaijin partnership program that I can think of. So I hope I answered that question to you. Next question comes from Revec. Uh, what are your PC specs? And I want to read that out for you. I have a GeForce GTX 1080 and I have an Intel Core i7-7700K CPU with 4.20 GHz. And I also have 16 GB of RAM and I have a 4K monitor. Uh, that should give you a good impression. Now I want to quickly add on that. I've played on my old PC when I was uh, at home over Christmas and oh god. Playing with an older PC, War Thunder, with less FPS, um, with um, a smaller not 4k screen and all that it's oh it's nearly unplayable especially with an with an old mouse and an old keyboard god <laughs> it's uh, it's really a big difference if you have a good pc it really enhances the gameplay a lot in in war thunder i'd say so another comment comes from better than you and it's about the loot boxes there are loot boxes and there were loot boxes in war thunder for quite some time but here is a difference first of all there were for 299 golden eagles and you never made a real loss in fact you could win 300 golden eagles very often i tried them out uh, for like a thousand 200 gold needles something like this uh, and I was like eh, not worth it and that was I guess from the Gaijin partnership program or something like this there were also loot boxes for winning boosters with silver lines where I blasted through like 15 million silver lines once and this is also where a lot of my boosters come from <laughs> uh, then furthermore I think they are not essential they are not important and a lot of the loot boxes that you get for for example logging in they are for free some battle or rewards uh, they are also for free if you win them so the overwhelming majority of loot boxes are uh, for free in War Thunder and uh, I guess it's up to you if you really want them or not, but they are not essential in my books. And you know, something like premium tanks or um, premium account you can directly buy. Uh, so I think the loot boxes in War Thunder are there, yes, 
but they're not a problem. That's the basic message that I want to give. And this is where the actual comment came from. In fact, I forgot about them. And this is where I said that there are no loot boxes in War Thunder because I had this pay system in mind from Battlefront 2 from EA where I actually made the comment. Yeah, wow, already 44 minutes of just me rambling on about certain things in War Thunder. With having said that, please uh, ask your questions in the comment section. I will answer them with the next Stuck Talks. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I could answer all the important questions and uh, everything that there was to answer. Uh, I hope I gave you a good overlook what happened since the last few days, months uh, and so forth within War Thunder, my ideas of it and as usual please give this video a like if it did, subscribe if you want to see more and we'll see each other on the battlefields and in the skies of War Thunder.